In this video, you'll learn all about the extensive laundry list of countries that Russian leader Vladimir Putin has been banned from traveling to, unless he wants to wind up in handcuffs. What's that, Mr. Putin? You'd like to take a vacation? Well, of course! As your travel agent, I'll find your perfect destination. Don't tell me. It's that war in Ukraine that's got you down, hasn't it? Not to worry, Mr. Putin will send you on a nice, relaxing trip to help you forget all about it. How about a week or two in a stay in one of the cultural capitals of Europe? Somewhere like France or Italy, where you can roam the city streets and imbibe in the rich history of art, music, and… oh, that's unfortunate, it says here you can't travel to either of those. Never mind. How about a trip to make you really forget your stresses? Five nights in the Maldives. Hot weather during the day, and once the sun goes down, you can party and enjoy the nightlife without a care in the… Oh, oh dear. Sorry, sir, it seems like you're banned from there, too. Okay, well, how about somewhere off the beaten track? Not just a holiday, but an adventure. Somewhere you can get lost exploring the natural beauty of the rainforest, where nothing and nobody will be able to bother you. I've got just the place. Costa Rica, and you're not allowed to go there either, are you? Hold on a second, Mr. Putin. Let me just see how many places you're actually banned from. Oh my, that's… that's about two-thirds of the entire planet. Having an active warrant out for your arrest might put some considerable limitations on the places you can travel, and incur some severe consequences if you're found to be heading to places where you've been accused of a crime. Now imagine that scenario, but playing out on a global scale, with one man accused of some of the most heinous crimes imaginable, and in so many different places that there's actually fewer countries he can travel to than he can't. And that's the situation facing Vladimir Putin thanks to an arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court. He effectively faces a travel ban spanning 123 different countries. And on top of that, there are numerous countries that have denied access to Russian citizens, restricting them from entry, and even some that have arrested and deported some tourists back to Russia. We'd wager these countries would gladly do the same to Putin if given half the chance. Add to that the growing list of all the nations that Russia itself considers to be their rivals, with Putin's government placing them on a published, unfriendly countries list, those are probably places that the Russian leader wouldn't want to go to, even if he wasn't also banned from most of them too. So what are some of those countries? Well, for starters, there's the United States. Given Russia and America's tumultuous history and Putin's hostility toward the states, it's hardly surprising that the US is one of the countries that's become a seemingly permanent fixture on Russia's unfriendly countries list. In fact, when the list was first published, the US was one of the only two countries on it at the time, the other being the Czech Republic. However, since 2022, the number of countries Russia considers unfriendly has gone up. According to the Russian government, those mentioned on the list are the countries from around the world that have, or it feels are likely to, commit unfavorable actions against Russia, including its citizens and companies. So of course, that places the USA firmly on the list, especially after the recent sanctions placed on Russia. Most recently at the time of this writing, the United States issued an executive order that would clamp down on foreign financial institutions that were providing support to Russia, especially their military and industrial sectors. Any banks or other institutions found by the US to be supporting Russia would under these sanctions be blocked from operating in America, effectively forcing those organizations to withdraw their financial backing of Russia or face the consequence of losing business in the states. The US has been operating like this for a while when it comes to Russia. Rather than taking direct action against them, not wanting to risk a war between both the countries, America's instead been searching for workarounds that indirectly affect Russia. Another example of this indirect method of sanctioning came when the US urged certain countries, like Turkey and the United Arab Emirates, to reduce their commercial efforts in Russia, as these were helping to financially bolster the Russian military. However, these countries didn't adhere to the US's wishes and continued to trade with Russia. However, while those sanctions and long-standing animosity between Russia and the US is likely to prevent Putin from traveling there anytime soon, America is far from being the only country that's opposed to Russia through various sanctions. Throughout the EU, numerous countries have joined the US in introducing sanctions either directly against Putin himself, as well as other members of his government, or in general against Russian citizens. On top of these widespread boycotts of Russian companies that operate overseas and channel money toward Russia's economy, speaks to there being quite a considerable number of countries where Putin wouldn't be welcome. This does raise the question of why exactly are so many places making so many steps to oppose Russia? Well, the short answer is because of the war in Ukraine. 
In early 2022, Russia launched an invasion in Ukraine, escalating the conflict that's been going on between them since 2014. This was not only the cause of the deaths of tens of thousands of innocent Ukrainian civilians, but also the largest attack by a European country on another since the Second World War. A lot of the increased sanctions placed on Russia by countries around the world were imposed as a direct result of the invasion, as a way to severely limit Putin's military and hinder them in their war against Ukraine. And it was as a response to all these sanctions that more nations started joining the United States and the Czech Republic on Russia's list of unfriendly countries. But how does Putin in all likelihood not wanting to visit countries that oppose him lead to him being outright banned from traveling to almost two-thirds of the world? Enter the International Criminal Court. For those who are perhaps unaware, the International Criminal Court is an organization consisting of several parties from across the world in a single intergovernmental collective. It was established in 2002 under a treaty known as the Rome Statute. Remember that, it'll be important in a second. Think of something like the United Nations or the World Health Organization, although the United Nations has around 70 more member countries than the ICC. However, rather than meeting to discuss and coordinate policy or tackle public health crises, the International Criminal Court exists to allow these many different countries to deal with huge-scale crimes that span multiple countries, particularly crimes against humanity, crimes of aggression, genocide, and other war crimes. And it's that last one that the International Criminal Court has accused Vladimir Putin of. You see, going to war isn't a free-for-all where countries, their soldiers, and particularly their leaders are allowed to do whatever they like to their opponents to secure victory. Thanks to treaties like the Geneva Convention, warfare comes with its own strict set of rules to avoid unnecessary loss of life during a conflict, as well as preventing cruel treatment towards civilians caught in the crossfire between opposing military forces. The use of torture or specific forms of physical violence against captured soldiers and civilians is considered to be a war crime, as is deploying starvation as a weapon, deliberately attacking civilians, shooting any soldiers that have surrendered, and the use of certain banned weapons like chemical and biological arms. Over the course of the war in Ukraine, the Kremlin has vehemently denied that they or their troops have enacted anything that constitutes a war crime. But the International Criminal Court feels otherwise and has placed a warrant out for Putin's arrest as a result. So what exactly has Putin been accused of? Well, the war crimes the ICC suspects the Russian leader of committing have pertained to the unlawful deportation of Ukrainian children. While Ukraine is not a member of the ICC, it accepted their jurisdiction and allowed for a team of 42 people to be dispatched to their country in order to investigate. In addition to the aforementioned deportation, they're also addressing the potential genocide taking place in Ukraine after the country's president Volodymyr Zelensky accused Putin of intending to erase Ukraine as a nation entirely. War crimes are certainly and sadly not an unprecedented occurrence during the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Officials within Ukraine have been working with other countries, including the United States, to gather evidence of such crimes committed by Russian forces. By the middle of 2023, 80,000 cases have been opened. One of those even led to the life imprisonment of a Russian soldier who had killed an unarmed civilian. Another pair were sentenced to 11 and a half years for firing shells at a school. According to the findings of the court's team, Putin and his commissioner for children's rights, Maria Alexievna Lvova Belova, have forced more than 19,000 children living in Ukraine to be separated from their families and sent to Russia against their will. Russian officials claim this is an act of humanitarian aid to remove children from potential harm that might come from being caught in the crossfire of Putin's war. However, in March of 2023, the International Criminal Court responded by issuing warrants for both Vladimir Putin and Maria Alexievna Lvova Belova. Now, you might be thinking that this is a hard thing to police. After all, arrest warrants are hard enough to manage on a state-by-state -state basis. Someone in the U.S. might have a warrant out for their arrest over a crime they committed in Michigan, but might still remain free living in Minnesota. Putin's arrest warrant from the ICC calls for the Russian leader to be detained and made to face justice in accordance with international law for the war crimes he's allegedly enabled in Ukraine. So any country that are members of the court, those states who are all ratified under the Roman statute, are obliged to detain Putin should he travel to any of them. This includes 33 states in Africa, 19 in Asia, 18 Eastern European states, 28 from Latin America and the Caribbean, and 25 from Western Europe. Were this to happen, Putin would likely be brought before an international tribunal at The Hague in the Netherlands and prosecuted. Naturally, with so many countries belonging to the Roman statute and thereby obligated to arrest him, Putin isn't doing all that much traveling these days. 
Of course, one way to not be arrested and tried for war crimes is to just not leave home, and that seems to have been his preferred approach. Putin has hardly departed from Russia since the ICC issued its warrants, apart from visits to states that have never signed the Rome Statute. So as long as he's in Russia and doesn't venture into states that could enforce the ICC's arrest warrant, Putin is likely to remain safe from facing justice for his actions, and he seems to know that too. You see, the ICC can't just barge into Russia and arrest Putin, or even send someone to serve him a notice to appear in The Hague, for a number of reasons. For one, the International Criminal Court doesn't have its own police force, nor does it hold the authority to actually arrest its suspects, and instead has to rely on its member countries to enforce the arrest, which as we've just established Putin knows better than to travel to. That's also assuming that all of the ICC member nations would actually honor Putin's arrest warrant if, for some reason, he showed up on their doorstep. But even some of those members have denounced and condemned the warrant to arrest Putin, and there are even countries that have a history of disregarding the ICC's orders who likely wouldn't enact an arrest on the Russian leader. Despite being a member of the court, Hungary's prime minister has long held good relations with Putin. Hungary announced that it would not arrest Putin and has instead pushed back at Ukraine to negotiate an end to the war between them and Russia. Similarly, Serbia, while being a part of the ICC, is also a close ally of Russia, and as a result, they openly condemned the warrant. Brazil's national foreign minister conveyed that the country had no official stance on the ICC warrant, but acknowledged that they're obligated to respect the court's decisions. South Africa, who in 2015 previously refused to arrest Omar Hassan al-Bashir, the former head of Sudan, despite South Africa being a part of the ICC, and the fact that al-Bashir had been charged with genocide. Whether they repeat this behavior with regard to Putin is unknown, but in more recent years South Africa has announced its intention to leave the ICC. South Africa isn't the only country to have ignored ICC obligations with regard to al-Bashir either. Jordan, Nigeria, Kenya, and Uganda are all members, but refused to detain al-Bashir even though he had two arrest warrants out for him. Once again, it's unclear if they'd similarly be lenient with Putin. Plenty of Rome statute countries have vocalized support of the ICC's warrant, of course. Germany's justice minister acknowledged that Putin would be arrested and handed over to the ICC if he set foot in any German territory. Same goes for France and Britain, who condemned Putin's actions in Ukraine and welcomed the court's decision under the belief that nobody, no matter their status, should be able to escape facing justice. So add those three to the list of countries Putin can't go to. There's even the potential that countries who aren't states of the Rome statute could offer their assistance to the ICC, carrying out an arrest of Putin should he arrive there. The United States, who is not a member of the International Criminal Court, has favored this arrest warrant against Putin, with President Biden even calling it justified. Other countries that, like the US, voted against the Rome Statute that founded the ICC were Iraq, Israel, Libya, Qatar, Yemen, and China. However, not being a part of the ICC doesn't automatically mean someone is against Putin or his actions. India, famously the world's largest democracy, is also not a member of the court. Equally, they haven't openly condemned Putin's invasion of Ukraine. What about Russia itself? Isn't it also a part of the ICC and subject to following its rules? Well, no, actually, that's something else that makes arresting Putin harder to achieve in practice. Russia withdrew from being a part of the ICC in 2016 and does not recognize the court or its jurisdiction. Not being a part of the court effectively makes their warrant for Putin's arrest null and void within Russia itself. Their own government has even reacted with worrying threats against any country that acts on Putin's arrest warrant, with the head of Russia's Security Council saying that they would interpret any arrest of their president as an act of war, and would bomb any country that attempted to deliver him to the ICC. Russia also does not extradite its own citizens, and they're not likely to start with Putin, given his immense power and status as president of the country. The goal of issuing an arrest warrant against someone of Putin's status certainly sends a message to other Russian officials and members of their military that nobody is untouchable and can avoid accountability and justice for their actions, not even Putin. And while it's a largely symbolic gesture, it was something likely done by the ICC with the intention to limit his travel capabilities. There's also the possibility that further warrants will be issued by the ICC if they can learn of additional war crimes committed or enabled by the Russian president. As a Russian citizen, Putin would, in all likelihood, be barred from entering a number of countries that also shut their door to any Russian citizens as a result of the invasion of Ukraine. For a time, the European Union and Russia had an agreement for the facilitation of visas that made it possible for Russian citizens to travel into other countries around Europe. However, as of September 2022, that agreement was revoked, 
and a number of EU countries began to make it a lot harder for people from Russia to enter. While not impossible, they now have to provide additional documents and face an extended waiting time for visas to process. Some countries have outright stopped accepting Russian citizens' applications for even temporary tourist visas, including Poland, the Czech Republic, the Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, Lithuania, Slovakia, and Estonia. Add all these countries to the no-go list. The most strict restrictions are found in places like Poland, Finland, and Lithuania, who have denied direct entry to Russian citizens by air or sea. While many European countries have imposed a national restriction on the entry of Russian citizens, Finland and Latvia are among those who have taken it a step further. Both refuse to accommodate Russians attempting to flee from mobilization of Putin's army. While there might be very little chance of him deciding to head to any of those places, it does mean that much of the European Union remains out of bounds for Vladimir Putin. What about that unfriendly countries list Russia has? Well, including those rules out a whole host of other places the Russian leader can't go to, but also probably wouldn't actively choose to go to. 27 members of the European Union are on Russia's unfriendly list, as well as all of the members of the G7, so that rules out the USA, Canada, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Italy, and Japan. Being on the unfriendly countries list also places certain restrictions on these nations, such as those affecting trade agreements with Russia. Although a lot of those have already been heavily affected by the numerous international sanctions imposed against Putin and Russia after the invasion of Ukraine. Others on the unfriendly countries list include Albania, Andorra, Australia, the Bahamas, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Liechtenstein, the Federated States of Micronesia, Monaco, Montenegro, New Zealand, North Macedonia, Norway, San Marino, Singapore, Slovakia, Slovenia, South Korea, Switzerland, Ukraine, of course, and Taiwan. That last one is particularly interesting and potentially speaks to Putin's relationship with China. Russia does not recognize the government of the non-communist Republic of China, not to be confused with the People's Republic of China, led by the Chinese Communist Party. Officially, China hasn't taken a stance on the invasion of Ukraine, but trade between Russia and China has only strengthened since Putin initiated the war. So not everywhere in the world is shut off to the Russian president when it comes to countries he can travel to. In fact, as recently as 2023, he's welcomed President Xi Jinping on visits to Moscow. So there's the possibility of China's president returning the favor to Putin and enabling future visits. A number of Russia's key allies are also likely to still keep their doors open to Putin despite the war in Ukraine and the accusations of war crimes and subsequent ICC arrest warrant against the Russian leader. Many countries that were formerly part of the Soviet Union are still closely tied to Putin, with the exception of Armenia, Azerbaijan, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldova, Uzbekistan, and Georgia, given that those nations recognize the jurisdiction of the ICC. But there are numerous formerly Soviet states that Putin can still freely travel to, which are all parts of an intergovernmental military alliance known as the Collective Security Treaty Organization. That means that Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Belarus. The last of these, Belarus, has even gone above and beyond in terms of supporting Putin's invasion of Ukraine, with their leader Alexander Lukashenko remaining one of Putin's firmest allies. Lukashenko has even allowed Russian military forces to use Belarus as a staging area to prepare for the fighting in Ukraine. Another of Putin's close allies is Iran, and they're equally unlikely to shut him out too, especially since they've been providing a number of self-detonating Shahed-107 drones to the Russian army to be used in Ukraine. Those unmanned aerial vehicles have seemingly been fitted with technology that can detect and home in on high-value targets on a battlefield including the British and American rocket launchers being used by Ukraine to combat Putin's forces. Once locked on, the Shahed 107s will fly directly toward the target and then explode upon impact. So should Putin decide and go see in person the handiwork that goes into making his drones, he's likely still able to visit Iran. All in all, there are around 70 countries in total that Vladimir Putin can potentially still travel to, but as long as the war continues and he's not made to face justice by the ICC, he's not likely to be leaving Russia anytime soon. Now check out why Putin's invasion of Ukraine is a failure and more Putin problems, or watch this instead.